Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis. Welcome to episode 31. And this week, we're going to take a sneak peek at a new tutorial that I've just released into my web store called Running Late. Now, in the video, I'm going to show you three ways that you can enhance and bring out the details within your pictures. The first way is purely using Photoshop, and the remaining two ways are using third party plugins. We've got the Color Effects Pro 4 from the Nick Collection by Google and Topaz Detail 3. Now, I'm not just going to show you how you can use them to bring out the details, but also want to just quickly show you and tell you why I would tend to use one technique over the other. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add in some details now. We're going to add detail and texture onto our London gent suit and a little bit also onto his skin because it can work really, really well when you're working on male portraits. Now, I'm actually going to show you three ways that you can do this. I think this is something useful to cover because you might have a technique for adding in detail and texture, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work on every single image you work on. Most times in retouching, there's never a one-click fix, so it's always good to have a few little techniques that kind of get the same result but work better on some some images than others so the first thing i do then i'm going to i'm going to show you how you can add detail and texture using photoshop and then we'll go on to showing you some plugins that i use which really 99.9 percent .9 of the time is what i actually do now i use plugins however let's have a look at the first way we can do this within photoshop now i've actually just got a copy of our london gent here so um this particular technique is destructive. It's not something that you can use in a non-destructive way, and I'm trying to keep our retouching here non-destructive so that we can make changes later on. But for this one, we need it to be destructive. So what we're gonna do is we've got our London gent picture here. We need to create two copies. So I'm gonna press Command or Control J twice to get two copies. And both of these copies now, I'm gonna hold down my Shift key, click on the one beneath, and I'm gonna put them both into a group. So a new group from layers. And we'll just call that detail, like so. I'm gonna change the blend mode now of this group to soft light. Then I'll go to the group and open it up. And I'm just gonna click on the thumbnail, or the layer at the top of the group here, and I'm gonna change the blend mode of that layer to vivid light. Then I'm gonna to go to the image menu, adjustments, and invert. So it kind of looks like nothing's been done, but the image has now been prepared for adding in some detail. So let me just zoom in just a little bit. Let's just zoom in so we can see a little bit more of what's going on here. Then I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, and surface blur. And this is now where we can dial in the amount of detail and texture that we want to add into our picture. So we've got radius and threshold, and generally want to keep these two the same. We don't want to go too high because we will start to see a lot more artifacts and haloing appear. But I generally, if I do use this technique, I'll stay no more than around about 35. Most times it'll probably be around 30, and both the radius and threshold will be the same. Now this technique doesn't work, I don't feel, work that well on this particular image, and that's probably because there's a lot of shadow into this in the shadow and dark areas so we're going to see is if i've got it at 35 here in fact let's take it down to 30 on each radius and threshold at 30. we're still seeing quite a lot of artifacts being brought in even around the rim of his hat and also if i just turn this on and off we can also see some haloing coming around his hat and in fact all around the whole of the picture here we're getting some haloing but it's the artifacts that I don't like. We're seeing quite a bit of the image breaking down there, particularly in the shadow areas. So this technique wouldn't work or wouldn't be one that I would use on this particular image. So that's just to show you how you can add details uh, using Photoshop. It's just another technique to add to your toolbox. So we'll just cancel that. And in fact, I'm gonna just get rid of this particular copy of that image there. This is the one that we came from camera raw into Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you now two ways that we can also add details. The first way, and the great thing here is, we've got our image, we came from camera raw as a smart object, and we can use plugins as smart objects. So I'm gonna to go to, first of all, filter, 
Nick Collection, and I've got here Color Effects Pro 4, and this is by Google. So I'm going to click on Color Effects Pro 4, and in here we've got one of the presets or one of the actual options that we have is one called Detail Enhancer, and it's a great little uh, filter here that we can apply. In fact, let's just zoom into, let's go to 100. So, and I can hold down my spacebar, click, and drag it around. And we can add in different amounts of detail over on the right hand side here. So I can dial in how much detail I want. We've also got, we can control the contrast, the saturation. We've got effect radius here. We can go from fine, normal, and large. And I love this particular plugin. I use this a lot on a lot of my images. However, I'm not going to use it on this one because one thing you might notice is, let's just zoom this up just a little bit more on the contrast there. A bit more on the contrast, no, not too much. But what I'm finding with this particular plugin on this particular image, it does actually turn our London Gent suit, if I turn the preview on and off, it does tend to turn his suit a little bit lighter. It's a, this is supposed to be a black suit where he's got the pinstripes in it, or certainly a dark suit anyway. And this particular plugin, because it's a very strong kind of effect over the whole of the image, it's kind of flattening out the color of that suit and it's making it appear gray. So in my original running late picture that I got and have posted onto my portfolio, I didn't use Detail Extractor within Color Effects Pro 4, but I do use it a lot. I absolutely love this plugin. So we're not gonna use that. We're gonna click Cancel. Now the one I did use for this one was by Topaz. So we go Filter, Topaz Labs, and we're gonna use Topaz Detail 3. So if you click on that, that then takes us into the Topaz Detail 3 um, work area, the sort of um, workspace here. Now the thing is, when you go into Topaz Detail, one of the things people say is that the preview isn't all that good. Well, it is. It's just a case of knowing how to actually view the image while you're in the workspace. When it comes in by default, it'll be at this size. But if you actually want to see a proper, real representation of what this filter's doing is, you need to click over on the right-hand side here where it says one-to-one. -one. Click on one-to-one, -one, it'll bring the image in nice and close. This now will give us an accurate look at what our plugin is doing. Now, over on the right-hand side, we've got loads and loads of different sliders. And over on the left-hand side of the picture, we've got loads of presets. And we can actually save our own presets once we've made up whatever kind of uh, menu of options that we want to use. But generally, all I do when I come into this plugin, over the right-hand side where it says Detail, we've got Small Details and Small Details Boost. And they are probably 99.9% of the time the only sliders I use. So I'm going to take the top one first of all, Small Details. And I'm going to drag that over to around about 45, something like that. And then I'll take the small details boost, and I'll take that to around about 20-ish. So it's roughly half of what my small details is what I take the small details boost slider to. Now, you can now see in this little preview area what the, the effect is. We can see there's a heck of a lot of detail and texture being brought out onto the suit, and if I click and hold down, that's before and then let go, after. So before and after. So we're now really starting to see all the sort of material texture there, but we're not losing the darkness of the suit. It's still remaining quite dark. We're also not getting any halos, and we're not really seeing any artifacts, certainly around the rim of his hat like we did do when we first did the detail technique in Photoshop itself. So I'm gonna go for that. To be honest with you, it doesn't really matter too much how far we bring up these sliders here, because once we come out of here and then into Photoshop, we can then use opacity to control how much of that effect we actually want to see. So now I'm gonna click OK. That's gonna process that detail texture and then bring us back into Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, obviously detail has been applied to the whole of the picture. The same amount is on, our, on the skin, on the suit, and also on the background. But we're not concerned about the background because we will be cutting him out. Now over on the right hand side now here in the layers panel, we can see that we've got our smart object. And beneath it we can see where it says Topaz Detail 3. We could click on the eye icon here to turn that effect on and off. 
We can also double click on the name Topaz Detail 3 and that would open us up back into Topaz with those sliders that we've just used to apply the detail and if we wanted to adjust them we could do just like when we went back to Camera Raw originally to adjust our, our London Gents eyes. This is totally non-destructive workflow. And also over on the right hand side here, if we think the effect's too strong, this little icon here, we can double click on that and then we can dial in using a slider that will appear in the dialog box to dial down the strength of that effect. But what we're gonna do is paint in the detail where we want it. So we don't want it on this background. So I'm gonna come over to my uh, layers panel, click on the layer mask that's provided with me now that we've used this Topaz Details uh, plug in as a smart filter and I'm going to invert that layer mask to hide the detail. I can do that two ways, I can press Command or Control I to invert it or while I'm on that layer mask I can go to Image, Adjustments and Inverse. It does exactly the same thing. So now when I zoom in there is no detail that's been applied. But what I am going to do now then is I'm going to get a brush, I'm going to make sure that the foreground colour is white and I'm going to choose the brush that's not completely soft, but I'm going to go to around about midway-ish, something like that. And I'll bring the brush down in size. Opacity is going to be around about, I don't know, maybe 80%. So I can get 80% of that detail back into the suit. And all I'm going to do is start painting it in over the actual suit now. So where I paint in white is revealing where I've actually painted in and brought the details. So anywhere but the skin, I'm going to paint back uh, 80% and I'm going to work my way all around the image now, just painting over my London Gent. But when it comes to the skin, I obviously don't want to be uh, too much detail in the skin there because it just doesn't look right. But I think maybe around about, maybe 40% would look great. So once I've painted all over my London Gent to bring in the detail on the, on the suit and the hat, when it comes to his face and his hand, I'm just going to change the opacity of my white brush now to 40% and then I'll paint it in over his skin. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna let you uh, just sit there while I do this. I'm just gonna go around now painting 40% over the skin and 80% of that detail over the London gent's face. Okay, so we've jumped forward then and I've actually painted in now. I've finished in painting all this detail into his uh, suit and also on his face and on his hat. But just a couple of things before we move on to the next section. When you're doing this, just bear in mind that if you're painting with a brush at say 40%, as you're pressing down and painting, you're painting in 40% of the detail. But if you lift off and then press down again, you're adding another 40%. So it then build up and up and up and up till eventually you're adding, adding in the detail at the full strength, which is not what you want. Another thing, when you're actually doing this, it can sometimes be difficult to see exactly where you've painted and if you've missed areas. So what you can do is come over to your um, come over to your layer mask, hold down your Alt or your Option key and click on the layer mask. And then you'll be able to see if there are any areas that you've missed. And in fact, I have. I can see there's a little bit here, so I'm gonna get my brush, 80%. And I'll fill that little bit in there. And then there's a little bit around the top of his hat. And if I hold down my Alt and Option key, click, I can see that's his hair. I think his hair probably could take 80%. So I'll use 80% with my brush and I'll just paint it around that area there and that area there. Missed a bit on the hat as well. I can go for there. And that's looking pretty good. Let's just go for the, uh, just on his collar. Let's click on his collar, paint that in there. And job done. Also, obviously when you're using your uh, layer mask, if you paint too much over the edge there, you can see now I've got detail in the background that might make the cutout a little bit difficult. We just flip from using the white to the black and then we can paint that away at 100% opacity to remove it. So that's adding detail. The next thing we do in the next video is really add some character to this picture, character to this picture now by adding in some dodging and burning. So there you go, just a short video, but I thought it'd be worthwhile to show you, first of all, the three techniques that I generally use when I'm looking to bring out and enhance details in my pictures, but also discuss why I would tend to use one technique over another. And that boils down to whatever picture it is that I'm working on. Retouching being retouching, there's never gonna be a one-click fix, which is why I'm a big believer in kind of staying in that learning mode and always looking to build up a knowledge base of techniques that kind of do similar things 
but in a slightly different way. And that way you can have this kind of like a Photoshop toolbox. So depending on whatever picture it is that you're working on, you know you've got a technique that you can kind of like pull out the bag and will, will, will work best on that particular picture. Plugins are great, okay, I've got plugins, you've seen that I've got plugins that I generally use, but I tend to think of plugins also like camera gear. There is no need, despite the temptation, there is no need to just go out there and buy every single plugin on the market. It's like camera gear. There's no point buying every single modifier until you know what that particular modifier does and what you know you can do with it. Then and only then, when you come to a situation where you think, gee, I wish I could do X, Y, Z, that's the time that you'd get the new modifier. And that's the same with plugins generally. Now I know that some plugins do different things and that could be the reason you buy it. But when you've got plugins that do, for example, like, like in this tutorial here, some of them do detail enhancing. Why would you want to have ColorFlex Pro 4 when you've already got uh, Topaz Detail? But you can see in this video why I would do that, why I know I've got different uh, plugins for doing different things. But anyway, you can check out that full length tutorial there, that's running late, that's over in my uh, web store. You can check that out, just go to glynjewish.com forward slash store, or just click on the links on my website. But hey, that's uh, almost the end here. Make sure you click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any videos that I post each and every week. And also, like I say, I'd really appreciate the support. If you could just let other people know about this video and my YouTube channel, and also the uh, podcast, because now we're available on the iTunes, uh, iTunes podcast, let them know about that as well. I'd really, really appreciate the support. But that's all for this week. Until next time, I'll see you soon.